Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the Bimi Empire Advancement League. Uh, I am uh, Dele Belo, the president of the Bimi Empire Advancement League. With me today is our honorable vice president, uh, Mr. Joe Osamudiame Maui Orugwe. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening, everybody at home. Um, I hope um, you all are having a good time and I hope um, your day went well. You're welcome to um, another edition of um, the Benin Empire Advancement Big Conversation. Thank you all for um, staying tuned to um, our broadcast. I hope by the end of the day, um, we would all have something to, you know, learn from or what we're going to be discussing today. Okay, Mr. Um, President. Yeah, thank you very much, Honorable Vice President. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing about uh, politics and uh, other issue that is affecting uh, our society today. Uh, we all know uh, the local government election is coming. Uh, we can see a lot of posters in, in, the, in the internet in Facebook, in everywhere you look in our cities today, you will see everywhere the posters of, uh, of the candidates, of those people contesting for the election, for the chairmanship and the local government councilor and others. Uh, we will be uh, giving our people a little advice due to our own experience in this field, uh, especially uh, what happened in the last election, in the past election we were holding in Nigeria. Uh, we are also going to be talking about the security because uh, in any society where there's no security, that society is bound uh, not to develop yeah. as a whole. So in Nigeria today, we can see what is happening with the banditry, with the ESN and the, and the ISWEP and other Boko Haram and other, other say, armed robberies and others that is really dealing with our people seriously. So we're also going to be talking about that. Uh, should I start, Honorable anyone, Vice President? Mr. President, anyone? Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, in, in Edo State, uh, we can see the posters, a nation is coming. My own advice for our people is uh, somebody must not, not be related to you to vote for him. Uh, somebody yeah. must not be your friend to vote for him. I think we should start voting our people due to the job they have been doing. The good job they have been doing not just because somebody is popular, we started voting for him at the end, uh, he mess up, mess everything up. Uh, we can see most of our local governments today, what is going on in the councils and others, uh, how they has a contract with the, with the, with the uh, cattle herdsmen and others that our local government are suffering today from what they, uh, the, the contract they signed with these people. And uh, the development of our, our local government, uh, we shouldn't just overlook it at it. And uh, we should look at everything, what these people have been doing. Because I can see some old names in this list who has been in politics for a very, very long time. Even since I was born, there, there, are, st there are still some lists there, some names that are still there. You know? So we have to start asking ourselves questions. Uh, why are these people always in politics? Are they born politicians? Or are they gaining things from the politics they don't want other people want to, other people uh, doesn't know about? What have they done for the development of our own uh, state? These are the questions we should be asking. Are these people really working for us? Because we employ these people. If we give them a mandate to, to be a councillor or to be a, a council chairman, 
we are giving them a mandate to, to work for us. We are paying them. So what, what do we do? How do we control these people? How do we talk to these people? Is these people even familiar with us? Because I can see some names who are not even associated with this local government they are contesting for election. You know? it, I think most of the problem we are really facing in, in our election is that once we see money, once money is there, everybody will not forget that nominating these people, voting for these people, it will take another good four years before we can change these people if anything is going wrong. Because we can we'll see what is going on in the States today. It's like all our people are now saying, oh, had I know. So we shouldn't allow that to happen to us again. And at the same time, the election violence is, is always getting out of hand. And the policemen, the, the, the youth corps, and everybody that is uh, assisting the government to conduct this election, it's like we are putting their lives in danger. You know, because uh, these party people will organize talks to go and be fighting these people because of uh, polling boots, what they call it, I think polling boots. Yes, yeah, stealing polling boots, trying to feed it with another list and others, another papers, voting papers and others. So all these things, we have to prevent it if we are, uh, uh, if you want a free and fair election. And my own uh, uh, advice for our people right from time is that we don't have to sell our vote. Your vote have to last four years. Give your vote to the best candidate. The candidate you know we can control. The candidate who has the feeling for us the candidate that know what is wrong with our people, that can correct something. The candidate with the best idea and the, to execute that idea. This is the candidate we should be voting for. So Mr. Vice President, that's all I have to say for now. So please Thank continue, you, sir. thank you, Mr. President. Um, very, um, wonderful points you've made there. Um, I want to start from the elections, the um, upcoming elections in Edo State, the local government elections, but I want to look at it from a different angle. I think the news I gathered today was that uh, there's been an injunction placed on the local government elections in Edo State. Okay. So the court has ruled that the elections cannot hold but you know what? What fun, the the funny thing is that um, yesterday um, there was a meeting between um, stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party, which happens to be um, the ruling party in Edo State. Yes. You know? And then there seemed to have been some sort of compromise and um, resolution for peace, you know, amongst um, the gladiators. But today, um, I was a little bit um, not surprised, though, when I heard that the election has been put on hold. Okay. You know, and um, for me, having listened to a lot of people um, comment on the happenings, the political um, wranglings that has taken place in Edo State, I feel um, irritated you know, especially from people who seem to be sore losers and people okay. who are from the camp of the EPM, most especially, who have not, um, you know, moved on from the defeat in the last elections, you know, especially um, supporters of Pastor Ize Nyamu and um, Adam Sushiomale. You see, those people are, people who, majority of them are actually not even in the state, but they come on social media to um, whip up sentiment against the government. I, I'm not exactly. holding brief from the government. The, gov the governor is not 
my my type of governor you know i don't like his style but i always you know when situations come like this i look out for the general good of my people and that is why i i sit back and i look at things and um, you know do some critical thinking before i take a position you find out that a lot of people come on social media um peddle a lot of lies a lot of falsehood whip up sentiment against the government misinform people you know and um that has created an enabling environment for strife within the states, which is actually not good for development. Exactly. If those people were uh, criticizing the governor or the government constructively, I wouldn't have a problem. But when all they do is embark on shameful pettiness, you know, it's um, for me heartbreaking because Edo State is our is our state. If anything goes well, we will all have to, we would all be there to enjoy it. If the situation goes worse, whether you are outside the country, you know, or outside the state, somehow you have family, you have relations, you have loved ones, you have friends in the state. And no matter what happens, um, it's going to affect you somehow, you know. And that exactly. is why I have always been of the opinion that people should be careful, be mindful of the things they say to uh, whip up sentiments or to uh, create strife within the states, you know. I would implore Benin's, you know, especially to be mindful of the kind of people we pay attention to. A lot of these people are jobless sets of human beings who are bitter that their principal lost the election. I don't like, I don't, I've always said it, and I, I'm most people who follow my, my, um, write-ups on Facebook, on social media, have always known my position. I really don't like um, Governor Baseki style of government. I feel he's slow. As, I feel he's not inspiring. I feel he's not carrying the people along. I, fe I feel that there is a lack of depth in leadership in those states. That is my opinion based on um, the things that I've seen. I've looked at some of the projects he's done. I feel some of them are um, below par very substandard, most especially when it comes to the construction of roads. But again, like I, 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 I made an argument some few days ago, if Adam Soshomale had spent wisely the internally generated revenue, the federal allocation, and all the loans he collected as governor of Edo State, Edo State would be one of the most beautiful states today in Nigeria. So there, there, there has an issue, there's, there is the issue of accountability, you know. And today I see people, you know, defend Oshomole and say he's the best thing to have happened to Edo State. He's not the best thing to have happened to Edo State. No. He's not the best thing to have happened to Edo State because when you talk about progress, you talk about a man's success story, you have to place it side by side with the resources that was made available for him. Yes. How did the governor... Um, expend those resources because Edo State is indebted. Their loans or loan obligation, the Obaseki government, you know, is committed to be, you know, by virtue of the fact that government is a continuity. Yes. You understand? If those loans weren't there, probably the government would have had more to spend. But again, Obaseki was head of, um, I think, the management, economic management team of, of the Edo State government, governor and um, government under. The leadership of um, Oshomale. So we cannot also, he is not immune to all the blame and all that because he was part of that government. You know, now, and what interests me now, one, what is interesting for us now um, to note is that the same people who we are praising Obaseki as a technocrat, as a know-it-all, as the engine room of the, of, of the Shomale government, are the same people sitting on social media today to criticize, to call him all sorts of names, call him a failure, call him that, you know. So Benin should be careful. We, we ought to be careful um, and dissect the information that these guys are throwing at us yes. so that we don't um, take decisions based on... Um, you know, ill information or misinformation, if I may use um, the right word. Um, 
and also an advice for the supporters of Pastor Ize Yamu, the elections are over. You know, the gubernatorial election is over. You guys should move on. And if you want to criticize, nobody's saying you should not criticize. Of course, you are the opposition. You have to criticize, but you have to criticize constructively. You have to show that you have something in your brain. You don't just come out and become all petty and, you know, begin to um, show how vile you are. If you want to criticize, raise issues, raise them and show that you are intelligent. You know, at least you go school, you know, show, show the people that you, you are not a total waste. The pettiness, the, the, the childishness on social media is extremely too much, you know, and also to the governor. I, 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 had, I had said something, the senior, I think senior special aid to the governor on, on media or whatever, had, you know, contributed to one of her posts in, on her Facebook page. And I had told her that I asked the question, do you have a commission of information? And she, you know, responded yes. And I said, okay, well, if you have a commission of information, it's actually not working. Yes. Because the people are not carried along. The people do not know. The, the projects that the governor has invested our resources into. We don't know what he's done. We don't know what he's doing. We don't know what he intends to do in the next two years. You know, the people are not carried along. There is a communication gap. And that is, okay. it, that is the reason why you have so many of these petty folks, you know, filling that, that vacuum that, you know, um, that the, the, the lack of adequate information has created, you know, and so the government itself has to sit up when it comes to dissemination of information. And the government in, in the process of dis disseminating information have to give the right information also, because there's been a lot of flip-flopping, you know? And it, it just shows that in Nigeria as a whole, in Africa as a whole, there is a problem with leadership. Exactly. You know, the political class are not being sincere with the people. That is just what it is. And because the political class are not being sincere with the people, there is a um, mistrust. There's a lack of trust between the, 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 um, the leadership and the followership. You know, and when there is a lack of trust, there can't be synergy. Leadership and followership needs to be um, in one accord for us to move you know, towards um, the path of nationhood. And I've always said it, that country is not a country where we can say it's a nation. It's just a country. Yes, you know? it's a country. We are not a nation because we do not have the same um, vision. Yes. We do not have the same dreams. We do not have the same vision. You know, every unit value. is pursuing its own selfish agenda. You know, so we can't call it a nation. But be that as, as it may, we are all in one geographical um, setting called Nigeria. And so we have to work out things you know, among um, the federating units, you know, and that's where I feel Edo State is not really doing so much, especially in the area of um, culture, tourism, and education. The state is not doing so much, you know, and um, I would have loved to see the local government elections, you know, move on as planned, um, because I've seen some interesting um, faces, you know, who have um, signified their intents, you know, to, um, to contest whether as councillors or local government chairman or what have we. And for me, it's interesting from both the PDP and the APC, I've seen some very interesting faces. Yeah. And so I would have loved um, to see the election, local government election go through so that we can see these people and see what they are bringing on board, what new ideas they are bringing, because you see, the local government is the arm of government that is close to the people. Yes. You understand? It's, um, it's the, the units that is much more closer to the people. It's far more closer to the people than the state governor, the state government, or the federal government. And so, yes, I, I would want to see um, the local government election go through. But I also want to see that um, in doing so, we do not um, rip the constitution, the laws, because any society that develops, develops because it upholds um, the constitution, you know? And so, yes, the local government needs to go on, the local government election needs to go on, but it needs to go on 
according to what is stipulated in the laws of the land. It's as simple as that, you know? And so, um, I don't know, probably maybe the elections will go on if the injunction is lifted. And you know, the funniest thing is that it was actually members of PDP that approached the courts against their own governments. Yes. You know, there's been this fight or who is going to control the structure. Okay, it's like we lost our contact to our honorable uh, vice president. Uh, but uh, let me just point out some issues that is really facing uh, the election. Uh, as he was saying, we can see that uh, uh, from the party of the governor, from the PDP, uh, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding uh, between all of them. Okay, you are welcome back, sir. <laughs> oh, sorry, I think it was a network issue. Okay. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, there's, there's this bad blood between um, the state um, uh, officers and the state government, yes. you know? And for me, I just think it's, it's um, a battle of egos. You know, you have, a, you have a state executive that has not been able to win elections until the state, um, and the governor, they come from the APC to the PDP and was able to win election for them. And of course, this is politics in Nigeria. Yes. There is no way I can be convinced that Obaseki was given the ticket without having to set to some, some, you know, some grounds. You know, there's no way I don't have an evidence, but I believe, you know, that's the issue. Now, before they gave the, the, the ticket to Obaseki, I, of course, I know that they already know who Obaseki was. Yes. You know, and so it is, um, for me, so funny when I see these people throwing all sort of things <laughs> out in the air and they are supposed to be seasoned politicians, you know, it clearly shows that um, they were just all about getting power. They just wanted to get power at all costs. They didn't, uh, you know, tie all, all the loose ends. And that is what we are seeing today. You know, so um, governance has to stop because of politicking. And the question is, who is going to suffer for all this? It's the people of the states that will suffer. Exactly. Because when the, when the governor is supposed to spend time, you know, um, rendering services, delivering his campaign promises to the people, he's got his own party executives who are uh, constituting um, a stumbling block, you know? So government, governance comes to a halt and, um, you know, we begin to see party politicking in place of governance. And the, gov the governor, the government, and um, the political party must understand that PDP members do not constitute one quarter of the population of Edo states. No. They do not. And so any decision they are taking is affecting both the members of, um, of the PDP and people who are not even card carrying members of the PDP, who probably, you know, are just um, neutrals, you know, and it is so unjust, unfair, you know, for, for, for such things to be going on. So the people have to suffer for your lack of discretion, because that is all I see, you know, and the PDP itself is becoming a distraction. Yes. It's becoming a distraction. The governor doesn't have enough time. There's politics coming in by 2023, and you're already distracting the governor. For instance, let us, let us even assume today that Governor Obaseki fails. And these same PDP executives in the state level have their way through the primaries. What are they going to tell the Edo state people? What are they going to tell the Benins? Because you have made your, your, your candidate fail yes. on, what, on, on, whose, on whose performance are you going to run your election? I expect these people to, to know all the simple things. You know, but of course, yes, that is a state where people always depend on um, election malpractices to get into, to, uh, to, um, get into power. So, you know, a lot of them are just not thinking because if they are thinking, 
they should know that for them to retain power one way or the other, it means that they must work to ensure that the governor succeeds because it is based on his, the, the, the service delivery that you will go back to the people and say, okay, this man has succeeded. And yes. so can you retain our party in power? But these guys clearly don't even understand what these things are. And I am baffled because we are beneath. We are supposed to be intelligent people. Exactly. You understand? I'm baffled. But well, that's, that is that for um, the politics in, in, in the states. And I hope um, the local government election goes on because now the PDP has used its own wahala to affect other political parties. You know, I hope um, they, they sort themselves out and then um, the election goes on. So, yeah, on the killing, you want me to proceed on the killing, sir? Yes, sir, you can continue, sir. Okay, yeah, so on the killings, the killings and the, the violence in, in Nigeria, it's heartbreaking because um, every day it's one terrible news or the other. And, you know, I want to zone, um, I want to zone my, you know, my focus, my attention to the Southeast. You know, the Southeast because I, I think I spent so much time, you know, one in a lot of Igbos, my Igbo brothers, about the dangers of the Nandekanu's utterances and actions. Yes. But they didn't listen. Because you see, the Igbo folks have an attitude. When they are doing something and you do not support it, they hound you, they insult you, they shut yeah. you down. Greatest enemy then. You become their enemy. And that is what that is the problem. Today they are reaping the fruits of the vile utterances, the terrible utterances of Nam de Kano. Today they are reaping the fruits of the lack of plan because we have always said you have a right to succeed. Nobody's saying you can't succeed, but you have to do it the right way. Exactly. You have to cut, you have to cut your neighbors, you have to go out there, you have to lobby people. Even if, for instance, the Beninese don't want to join you today, if you succeed, they are going to be your neighbors. And how would you be safe if your neighbors, you know, are, are, are not comfortable having you around? But they wouldn't listen. He sat down on Radio Biafra, you know, spewed a lot of a lot of hate, a lot of misinformation, distorted history, insulted people created an enabling environment for violence. It is the violence that we are seeing today. Yes. And I have always asked my Igbo brothers a simple question. You say you want to free your people from the injustice of the federal government of Nigeria. How do you free your people? Is it by forcing them to be at home? You force these people to be at home, yet you do not provide alternatives for them. Yeah. They have to feed their, their families. They have to pay their rents. They have to pay utilities. You do not provide alternatives for these people, but you force them to be at home. Now, when these people try to seek um, ends meet by going out, you know, to engage in their daily activities to make some money, you kill them, you beat them, you humiliate them, you degrade them, you demean them. What makes you different? from the federal government of Nigeria that you have been criticizing. Nothing. Not even worse. Now, you said the Fulanis, the headers are your problem. Okay, the headers are your problem. You say they come, they take your farmland, they rape, they maim, they kill, they destroy. We agree. But what is the difference between what the ESN is doing and what the, the Fulani headsmen are doing? The ESN, as we speak today, is destroying properties of Igbo people. The ESN, as we speak today, is killing Igbos. Yes. So a few days ago, we saw three ladies that were raped and killed, stripped naked and killed by these same people. Now there's an argument that they are not, they are not, they are unknown gunmen. <laughs> they are not ESN. But the question is who created it is another and IPO. They created the enabling environment for this violence we see today to rear its ugly head. 
Now, the movement that has said that, that was set to liberate the people has further enslaved the people. And when we point out these things to these people, they don't want to listen because they, they do things based on emotional sentiments. Yes. And you don't lead a people based on emotions. You lead them based on sanctified common sense. And that is where this whole thing has gotten to where you now have to see. You, just check out what has happened. Almost two or three local governments have been attacked. The yeah. last one I saw today was set on fire. That property is, does not belong to the federal government. That property belongs to the Anambra people, your people. But you are destroying your own property. It just doesn't make sense. By the time ESN, IPOB, and whatever they call themselves, by the time they are done with the Southeast, the Southeast will be lacking behind another 20 years. Exactly. That is what they don't know. Because one, nobody is going to bring millions, go to the bank and collect loans, and come and establish a factory in, 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 in a violent prone region, like the Southeast of Nigeria. Nobody's going to do that. No. But these people are not thinking. Nobody's going to do that. Because if I, am, if I am an investor, I want to invest my money in safe areas. I'm not going to invest my, in my, my, my monies in places where I know some unscrupulous elements will come and burn down my factory tomorrow. Or where I know that if, if I produce, um, um, my products cannot be purchased because the people do not have purchasing power. And you see, these are issues. When we raise these issues, these guys just wouldn't listen. No. You know, and, and, and for me, they must also understand that you have Eurobas, you have Aussas, you have Benins living in the Southeast. When this violence begins to attack other, other, other ethnic groups, there will be reprisals. I think they must understand that. Because as a Benin man, I'm not going to sit down and watch um, um, some thugs hack a Benin man to death. I'm going to speak up. Exactly. I'm going to speak up for my people. I'm going to defend my people. And that is what I, we want them to understand, that they have to put a stop to this madness. Because they have started this whole thing. They don't even know where it's going to end. It's going to consume the region, and they can't even see it. We already have so many problems already. The pipelines have been vandalized. Now we are told that 90% of our crude oil has disappeared. Yes. That is economic violence. We have the political, physical, socioeconomic violence, and terrible things happen happening in the South. And we have people who, instead of finding a solution by engaging in their mental strengths and, 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 and present a superior argument, no, they choose not to present a superior argument because they have none. Because they lack the ability to critically think. Yes. Simon Ekpa is sitting down in Europe <laughs> and he's burning down the Southeast. And these people think that he's doing them a favor. No. He's not doing you a favor. He's enslaving you. He's destroying what you have labored for. He's killing your children. Do you know how many? Let us look at the records. Mr. President, yeah. in the past six months, several illustrious sons from the Southeast have been killed, not yes. by the DSS, not by the army, by their own people. We know of how um, this woman died. Her husband was murdered, brought daylight. Yes. This is a beautiful woman that every Southeasterner should be proud of. She died serving this country. In fact, when she was serving as the head of NAVDAC at that time, it was the same majority of the people who hounded her were her own people. Yes. Because they were the ones involved in illegal importation of, of, of drugs, bad drugs, and, and, and production of substandard products that were destroying the people. Today, you have, with, uh, you, uh, among the youth today, we have, a lot of youth who have kidney problems. Yes. Who have liver problems. 
And these things are as a result of the kinds of things they have consumed, whether it's drinks or drugs, substandard products imported into this country, imported into that country by criminal elements. Exactly. Who just want to have fast money. But that's the truth. But nobody wants to see things the way it should be. And that's where the problem is. And so um, the Igbos, the Biafrans, or whatever they call, they'll choose to identify themselves. Because you see, today you call yourself Biafrans, you go outside the country, you constitute a nuisance. When the government of your host country clamps down on you, you don't call Biafra government, you don't call yeah. the Nam you begin to call the federal government of Nigeria. But yet you tell everybody that you are Biafrans, that you are not Nigerian. But when there is a problem, you are the first set of people that will be calling out the government of Nigeria, that it's not doing its work. Yes. Meanwhile, you yourself, you are not a responsible citizen. You do not represent the country well. Outside the country, you've given the country a bad name, bad reputation. Now, the violence in the Southeast has deprived wonderful Igbo technocrats, thinkers, inventors. You've deprived those people of living their dreams. Because, Mr. President, I must tell you, they are very intelligent inventors, wonderful set of people yes. in that region. But this violent set of people are crushing the dreams of this wonderful set of people. These people that should have probably led, led, led the way in terms of information technology, you know, and, and, and manufacturing, inventions. But you have an unsc unscrupulous set of people who have now destabilized the region. Because the Igbos must understand something. When everybody begins to run away from the region, the region is not going to, it's not going to develop. No. You already have issues from the Biafra war. You've already have, you already have issues from uh, the, the, the political equation that has not been favorable to you. Then you add this violence. Because as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it's a self-inflicted problem. Yes. Self-inflicted um, violence. I mean, there are better ways to go about these things. I just pray that the whole shenanigans and the madness going on in the Southeast does not explode, does not go out of control. Because by the time these people begin to attack non evils they are going to be rep rep reprisal attacks. Yes. But unfortunately, those that will be attacked will be innocent evils who are living outside the Southeast. And before you know it, there will be loss, loss, of, loss of life and properties. And that is why some of us, we are talking because we don't want these things to happen. Exactly. Okay, Mr. President, I, I think for me, that's, that's really all what, what I have to say. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me just add a little to it uh, before we, we round up. Uh, in the issue of uh, the election uh, in, in Edo State, I have a question for the PDP leaders. If you cannot lead your party, if you cannot bring peace to your party, how can you then guarantee the Edo people that you can bring peace to Edo people? If you cannot rule your own party, how can you guarantee the Edo people that you can rule them? Exactly. This is a question for you people. And we are waiting for your answer. Uh, in the <laughs> issue of the IPOB, uh, I have been following the IPOB for more than four years now. And uh, in so many occasions, uh, we, let me say there was a lot of threat coming to our own side uh, during our time in, in the other organization uh, yeah. from the canon uh, people, and uh, some other elements that was uh, their followers in Europe, uh, we were trying to make them clear that they are not bringing development to their own area, but they are bringing death to their people. And that is exactly what is happening today. 
because I, when I listened to the interview from uh, Dele Momondo with uh, Nadi Kanon, I, I understand fully what these people was up to. You know? And that is why today, when I look at Dele Momondo, I, I don't really look at him as a great journalist, to say the fact. At all. At Somebody all. who was just influenced in that within a few minutes, you know, without taking back, coming out the next day to be telling people these are so intelligent people. Is this the intelligent <laughs> people we are we are we are seeing here killing their people? This is not intelligent. That's this horrible. is destruction. Yes. I, when I was very young, I can I can remember my father used to go to Onicha, go to Aba, to buy things, to sell. You know, so the, this was the time really developed area, one of the most developed area in Nigeria before, even after the war, after the whole suffering these people went through, they were able to come back to do something for themselves. And now people are just waking up again and start destroying all these things that those people has achieved. Because we cannot see the reason why now the can say more ekba and other uh, uh, IPOB elements destroying all these things. Now you said you want to help your people. Is it dead? that you are bringing to your people that will help your, help your people? Is the dis destruction of their properties that will help their people? If you want to have a revolution, there are many ways to have a revolution. You have an economic revolution. Exactly. You have a technology, yeah. technological revolution. Igbo has, Igbo people has this. I think this would have been the best way the Igbo should have go, go. To show example for other Nigeria, this is what we can achieve. When we when we go on in such a way, but the problem is also there. We cannot put the whole blame of this the whole situation on the on, on the Fulanis in in the country at all. Because when we look at the past leaders of our nation of our country called Nigeria today. Igbo played a very, very important role in destroying this country. Not exactly. quite the Euro, Eurobus. Exactly. Exactly. They were the two power destroying this country before the, the Hausa Mal now or the Fulani learned how to destroy this country. Exactly. They brought all this tribalism, ethnic yeah. politics. You know? Yeah. So people have to think twice. Buhari is not, is, not, is not my leader to say the fact. I'm sorry to say that to the Buharis. Yeah. Because if Buhari cared today, our people will not be dying the way they are dying. At all. Uh, Una de Kano is not the result of Buhari, uh, because of Buhari. No. Una de Kano has a devilish mind right from the beginning. Exactly. People should understand this. Uh, the issue of Fulani Hesme was just a pretext to do what he was always want to do, you know, wanted to do exactly. in, in, in their region. We saw this, I saw this when they were grouping in, in the two states. We know we have to push them back. Otherwise, we will be having the same situation we are having today. But many people will not understand this. Mm -hmm. Because during the, the time of the of the of the demonstration or the riot that was going on, where the whole prison was was being attacked in Benin, this was not the job of yeah. the of the of the uh, demonstrators or the the rioters. This was the the job of the ESN. So we we know all this. What we are trying to do with our state. That's why we are still coming out today because we have to, we have seen the signals. If the military failed in Southeast today, we are going to bear the consequence.
because the refugees that will be coming will be coming to our state because Cameroon will not allow them in. It will come into our state. So we have to be prepared for all these things because we should not give them the opportunity to start attacking us again because we know what now the Kano is up to. If somebody maybe if had used wisdom, the the Igbo freedom he's preaching today would have been achieved. Would have been achieved. But this somebody who doesn't have intelligence, who doesn't reason very well before they do things. Because everything is not done with power, everything is not done with gun. But when you sit down with other people and think, then you will now realize there's other solution that other people can also reason, not just only you. Our message for Simon Ekba today, please, we are pleading with you. Stop killing our people in the East. Stop killing our Igbo brothers and sisters. Because this is not the freedom you are bringing to our people. This is not the peace you are bringing to our people. And there's also a question for you. Is this the peace you are bringing to your people? Is this the freedom you are bringing to your people? You sit down in Finland, you sit in the cold because like your heart is all cold as just as the weather in Finland is. Otherwise somebody with a reasonable brain will not be doing what he's doing to his people now. We advise you, we, don't, we, we are not saying you should not fight for your freedom, but stop killing our people. Stop killing our Igbo brothers and sisters because they are human beings fighting for their daily bread, doing everything they could to, to survive the whole situation that is going on in the country today. The Igbos had the opportunities to rule this country, to, to prove that they are intelligent people in this country but they use this intelligence in other form, in corruption, in doing so many other things. Not all, but many of them who were in power. We know uh, that today, this ethnic politics that is going on in Nigeria was not invented by the Fulanis. The Fulanis, they inherited this, the house has the inherited this polit ethnic politics. When I, when I think back during the uh, uh, Western region, what uh, Obafemi Awolowo was trying to do, then you will understand what is going on in Nigeria today. Trying to impose themselves on other people. That's exactly what is happening today. If, if Nigeria, if there was no country called Nigeria today, I think we would also still be having the same problem within the Igbos. Because what I know, Igbo as of, is from different tribes. It's still going to be this problem. This problem is not just from Fulanese alone. This is the problem you created for yourselves. Now the Fulani has made left Igbo land or part of Igbo land, but we still have rape, we have murder, we have armor break, we have everything. So you cannot be putting this blame on these people. It's not just only in Igbo land. We can see when some so the Igbo or what they call it was also trying to use the same system in, in, in some part of uh, uh, Western region. We saw what happened, a lot of violence. You cannot come to out today and say, these people, they are so peaceful, they are so decent, that intelligent. Intelligent people doesn't do that. 
We can see the situation between Russia and Ukraine today. This is not the act of intelligence. The money using to buy all these weapons, if invested in technology, how do you think these people will feel? Or the ASN, if they stop buying arms and ammunition and build a company in Igbo land, I think they will be able to employ more than 100 people rather than buy gun for 100 people or 2,000 2, people to go and fight their own people. So we, we have to start thinking intelligent. Although there's a different stage of intelligence or different type of intelligence, but in this area, this is very, very poor of you people. We have to say this. And this is what I've been saying to you people and I will continue to say it. You are not bringing freedom to your people. You are bringing death to your people right from the beginning. I told Colonel this. I told many of their leaders who called that period, told them this. To my own state, Edo State, I'm pleading with you people. The election must be peaceful. Nobody should lose his life because of election. Nobody must go to the hospital because of the of election. Let us show example as number one peaceful state of the country. We must we must vote anybody by force. This is our fundamental human right to vote who we want to vote for. And we can also see that during this election, a lot of gift is coming out from every corner. This is a gift for that. This is a support for that. This is, support. This is out of corruption. I think the, the state government have to make a law or provide a regulation or something that we minimize the, the amount of gift people should be giving out during this election. Because giving out gifts to communities, giving out gifts to people, uh, 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 what they call support, this is an act of corruption. This is an act of corruption. So we have to stop stopping all these things. Go out there, go out there without any gift, without any anything. Tap it to your people. I tell them this is what you can do. This is what you have been doing. And let them listen to you. And not by presenting gift, presenting all this unnecessary uh, uh, support you are calling support or, or whatever you call it. That is very, very wrong. Completely wrong in an election. You don't have to influence somebody to vote for you. Let it let this might come out to vote for you because of what you have done and because of what you are doing. Not because of um, amount of gift you have given out. So I would like to stop today. Uh, we are inviting all the candidates because we want to give, do some question and answer with these candidates. So if you are ready, then try to join us and uh, we are going to be setting out dates and all that to interview all these candidates. So thank you. That's it for today. Uh, sorry, our vice president has to leave earlier uh, because of the network problem he was facing. So I say good day and uh, have a nice sleep. See you tomorrow or Sunday. Thank you and uh, have a blessed day. Bye-bye.